but riding at 2 o'clock is a good time to ride. Hi everyone, Manoff and Brody here with you once again today from Human Vortex Training here in our Bike Fit and Strength Training Studio. I've been getting a lot of emails and messages on Facebook at Human Vortex Training asking me, hey, I have this discomfort on the trainer. What do I need to do? My butt hurts, my shoulders hurt, my back hurts. I'm gonna talk about the most common mistakes that most people make when riding the trainer. Number one is they don't use a mat or a hard surface underneath the trainer. Purchasing a mat, as you see here, yes, my dog loves an indoor trainer as much as I do, or I think maybe one day I did that. I was really frustrated after a trainer session. Can't remember which one. Underneath the mat, for those of you who have carpeting at home, you want to put at least an inch and a half of plywood that's a little bit smaller than the mat you're using. This is very important because it's going to help keep the bike supported and stable, especially if you have a nice plush rug to pass out on after your trainer session. We want to make sure that the bike is supported. If you don't want to purchase a nice big piece of plywood, that's fine. You can purchase a 2x2, two 2x2 two, two foot, by two foot for the front wheel and 3x3 three foot, by three foot for the back and you can put those two underneath. Very important to give you a stable platform. Now, next, we're going to put the trainer on top of the mat. So we want to make sure it's positioned toward the back so that the sweat is going to be caught underneath by the mat as well as making sure the trainer is not going to slide anywhere. Once we have the trainer and the mat set, we're going to put the front wheel block. Now, I want to show you something that's really important. A couple of you, you have emailed me and said, hey, I'm getting neck and shoulder pain or knee and back pain on the trainer. And it turns out that your front wheel is on the ground and the back wheel is in the trainer. That's not good, guys. As you see in this picture here, that actually puts your front wheel down about an inch to two inches. So it's like descending the whole time. You're sliding forward. You have to use your arms to keep you up. Not cool. The trainer is already bad enough as it is mentally and physically. We don't need to add more. So here are three solutions that you should look into in order to prevent this issue. Number one is using a baseline wheel block. This should come with your trainer. Every trainer should have one. This is important because as you see, the axles are now level. Or if you want, you can purchase a climbing block. There's a lot of different variations. This one in particular is from Cyclops. And you'll notice this is going to raise my front wheel between two and four inches. That's all you really need. You don't need to go higher than maybe four and a half inches. The other option, if you don't want to spend the money on either of these, or you don't have them, or maybe you have them and can't find them because it's been forever since you used the trainer, you can use an old textbook. You're going to destroy it two ways. One is because the front wheel is going to be moving and two, because you're going to be sweating. So just bear that in mind, guys. Now, once you have that front wheel up or level, now we can actually start riding the trainer. But there's an issue on the trainer. When you're working really hard, the air coming off of your body and around your body becomes heavy from the sweat because sweat helps us cool down and the air is not really moving like it is outside. So what we're going to do is we're going to add two fans, not one. Having airflow is very important. So the really really important thing here guys is pro tip number one you want to put the fan at 45 degree angles to your body not directly in front of you not directly to the side this is for fan number one we're going to have two fans the reason for this is is when the wind is coming at a 45 degree angle it moves the air away from the back of your body as well as the front this is going to help keep your overall body temperature down and keep you more comfortable on the trainer or rollers whichever you're using Fan number two is going to go on the opposite side of you at a 90 degree angle towards your butt. So it should be about equal with your hip. Now this is really important because we have one fan coming at 45 degree angle, the other is pushing it at 90. So this is creating kind of a vortex and pulling all of that hot, moist air away from your body and moving it around you to help you stay cooler on the trainer. If you elect not to use a fan, this is what the floor may look like. Kind of disgusting. This is a VO2 max 65 minute workout. You don't want to look like that because it takes a lot of fluids out of you. It takes longer to recover and it is miserable. So please at least use the one fan at 9, 45 degrees in front of you. And even if it's a small one at 90 degrees, set that up so that it's pointing up at you or at hip height and right next to your hip in the back at a 90 degree angle. Now, the things that a lot of people forget, especially for trainer rides over 75 minutes, you want to have a bar stool or another chair that you can set up and put extra water bottles that are already filled, food or energy gels that you're going to need, as well as the remotes, the TV, the music, or anything else that you may want. But really important, guys, you want to make sure that this chair is high enough that you can reach while you're riding because the first time I did this, I made a mistake. I got a really low chair like the one I'm sitting on, and it was almost impossible to get my gel off. So I had to stop pedaling, unclip for a minute, grab it, and get back on. Now, a lot of you are going to say, well, wait, you aren't carrying your gels in your back pockets? No, I generally don't like riding with a, um, 
a jersey on the trainer because it's going to restrict air movement as well. Uh, and it's just something, you know, you have a towel over your, your stem or over the handlebars in the front only for the trainer, not for the rollers. Uh, it makes it so you can you know, wipe yourself off and it's much easier without the, the jersey. So find what works for you, but our major take home points are, make sure that you have a solid platform on which to ride. On top of that solid platform, you should either have a towel or preferably some type of mat that's made for this type of wear and tear and use. Then, step number three, make sure that your bike is properly bolted into the trainer. We didn't talk about that, but we have a separate video on that here. Make sure you're properly bolted in. Step number four, make sure your wheel is at least level or up between one and a half and four and a half inches from the back wheel. Never, ever, ever put that wheel down on the floor so you're angled down at the axles. Step number five, what we want to do is make sure that we have a window open so we can get some airflow. Step number six, if you don't have a window or with a window, set up your fan at a 45 degree angle next to you. Step number seven, set up a second fan at a 90 degree angle next to your hip on the opposite side from the first fan in order to move air around you. Step number eight, make sure you have a high chair or a bar stool or something next to you that you have extra water bottles that are already filled with maybe ice in them, as well as some extra food. You can have your remotes or your telephone or anything else that you may feel you need during your trainer ride there. Now, I'm gonna give you a pro tip, number two. So number one was having that first fan at 45 degree angles. Pro tip number two is going to be that your trainer rides should be 20% less than what you would do the same workout outside. That does not mean that it should be 20% fewer of the efforts, but it does mean that if you're doing a 90 minute training ride, you should chop off about 18 minutes from that total ride time for the trainer, because you're always having to pedal on the trainer, you don't have coasting, you don't have stopping. So thank you for tuning in for this video all about how to set up and ride your trainer indoors and that you're able to ride smarter, not harder. And again, it is all about you.